Hi everyone, this is Mindy for Hero Arts, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of mixed media play. I'm going to be using some inks and images and stencils and also some hero paste. The two main products that I'm going to be using today is the Monarch and Milkweed stamp and die set and also the script stencil. I want to do a little Copic coloring, so I'm going to start by stamping out my images. I picked out the two floral images. One is kind of just a floral um, arrangement. The other one has the caterpillar on it. And then the third image I have here is the butterfly, which is going to sit on my floral cluster. So I'm inking these up in the intensified black ink, and I'm going to stamp these down on the Hero Arts Deluxe White cardstock. There is a lot of detail in these images and I just knew it wasn't going to stamp down perfectly the first time. So I'm going to ink those up again and stamp them down and just really pushing down on those detailed areas of the stamped images. To give these a really good clean, I spritzed a little bit of the Ultra Clean Cleaner onto my scrubber block and I'm going to scrub and clean my stamps so I can put them away right away. Now because I stamped this a couple times, the ink is going to be wet. So I'm just taking a heat tool and I was going over that because I don't want the ink to smear when I come in to color them with my markers. To do my coloring today, I am using my Olo markers, which is an alcohol marker. And I started out with kind of this light shade of red. I have the marker caps there over on the side if you want to reference those. And I just went over all of those circular pieces of the flower with that light red. And then I'm coming in with a darker shade of red and at first on this smaller bunch, I started kind of tracing the lines of the image. But then as I got to this second bunch, I just went to one side and pretty much made a C to give it that shadow layer. Then for the leaves and the stem, I'm gonna start off with a really light green. So this is a pretty bright color. That's going to be my highlight color. But I like to kind of start off and just laying that down so I know exactly where all of my stem and leaf pieces are. Then I'm going, I started coming in with a mid-tone and decided to switch to my darkest color here, which is that G1.7. And I took that dark color and just went around one side of the leaves to give it that shadow look. And then I'll come in with that mid-tone and kind of blend that out a little bit. So that way I have kind of that three color transition with all of my leaves and still left room for that highlight area. Then since I had all my greens out right away, I'm gonna come in and do this lar large floral bunch. And really I thought it would be easiest to do the leaves first because there are a lot of little pieces in this floral area. So by doing the leaves first really kind of helped me figure out where the leaves are and the flowers are. So I did the same process with the leaves on this one as I did below. I started with the lightest color, then jumped into the dark to give it that shadow and then blended out with my mid-tone. Then for the flowers, since there are a lot in here and it is very detailed, I'm taking that light red that I used before and I'm gonna color in all of these petals just in that light color. At first when I started, I really tried to pick out each flower bunch, but then afterwards I just really went back in and filled in all the spaces and just left it that way. It was just a lot easier to have everything filled in versus leaving white areas. Then I came in with that darker shade and really started in the center of each little floral bunch and kind of just flicked outwards towards the end of the petals. And I didn't do it to all of them, just to some of them, just to give it that, just kind of having that contrast look in there. Now I'm going to come back down to my caterpillar. So the caterpillar uh, is going to have yellow, white, and black. So I just went in and kind of scattered the yellow throughout the body. Some of those thin lines I was gonna have as the black line, uh, but I did come in with a gray and just gave it some thicker areas of that gray and then added a darker color to have that shadow on its belly. Now, as I move on to the butterfly, I of course wanted to color it as a monarch. And so for that, I kind of dug through my colors. I was a little nervous about this color. Olo markers kind of label there is a little different. And I do have swatches and this color, I wasn't sure it was going to work. So I, once again, just like the flowers, I started out by laying this color down uh, as kind of the base color of my butterfly wing. And then I'm gonna come in with a darker color and I'm going to add that kind of underneath or on the bottom of each section. And I really was liking how this color combination was turning out. Like I said, I kind of was second guessing myself, uh, but once I actually laid the color down and kind of blended that out, 
it really started to turn into a monarch. Now, if you happen to start losing your highlight areas, here's a little trick that you can do is that, and I'll show you in just a moment, but I was a little nervous about my highlight area not standing out as much. And I will end up taking a white colored pencil. I think this is a Prisma colored pencil. It's pretty tiny at this point. I've had it for forever. And I'm just lightly adding some of that white colored pencil to the top where my highlight is. And that really helps make those shadow areas pop and differentiate between the pieces of the butterfly wing. Now I'm going to take the coordinating dies, line them up over the images and hold them down with some easy C tape and run those through my die cut machine. Now I'm going to move on to working on the background and this background might surprise you if you follow me and know my work with ink blending. This one might shock you a little bit. So I'm starting off with periwinkle ink, which is turning into one of my new favorite colors. And I have a blending brush here that I like to use for my dark blues. I tried to wipe off any excess ink that may have been on the brush um, over on a paper towel. I think there was still a little bit of nautical ink in here. It's a little darker than I expected. But I started on one side of the cardstock and you can see that I'm kind of scattering the darker areas. So I kind of created a line of ink that was a darker color and then I went around the edge with it just kind of lightly ink blending and the same thing for the top. I'm going to kind of come down a little bit a little heavier handed and then lighten it up throughout. So it's very scattered very random looking uh, not my typical ink blending uh, scene that I would normally do. But I want to make sure that I'm getting the edges because I am going to leave this as a full four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel. So looking a little crazy right now, but just hold on. This is just our base layer of our card and it's going to come out really awesome in my opinion. I'm going to add a little bit more interest to my background before I do any stencil on top. So I have some blue shimmer spray and I think this is the gold metallic ink. Add a little bit to my work surface with a couple drops of water and then I'm going to pick that up and flick that over my background. I really wanted to do this first because once I apply the stencil paste I'm going to have to wait for that to dry otherwise that would kind of blend into my paste and I wanted it more in the background. So I'm going to dry this with my heat tool so that nothing kind of smears or blends into my paste that I'm going to use here and then I lined up my script stencil which this has got to be one of my new favorite stencils. I'm going to be taking my palette knife and I'm picking out some of this white pearl paste and I'm going to spread it over the background. Now, one thing that I see a lot done with script stencils and script stamp sets is it's not complete. It's not a perfectly stamped or perfectly uh, applied paste. It's kind of scattered on the edges and I love that look. So I made sure to kind of swipe and pick up at the end so that it didn't leave a perfectly done edge. It was very scattered. Then I can peel this up and I absolutely love it. It's very subtle so it's not going to take away from my images. So I took that over to my sink and I washed it right away and then I set my panel off on the side to dry. While that's drying I'm going to work on my sentiment. Now this sentiment also comes off of that Monarch and Milkweed stamp set. I prepped some pitch black cardstock with an anti-static powder tool and I'm going to ink up my sentiment in the unicorn pigment ink just kind of pressing down gently and because I'm doing this very gently I'm going to ink it up again just to make sure I have really good coverage with the ink. Then I'm going to sprinkle on some detail white embossing powder make sure that's covered the entire stamped area and tap off my excess. And then I'll bring in my heat tool and I like to start from the back and then bring it over to the front to finish melting that embossing powder. Then to clean off kind of some of that powder that's left over I like to go over it with a Swiffer cloth and if I still feel like I could get more black to come through I'll take this pencil eraser and just real gently go around my sentiment with that eraser and help remove some of that powder. Then I'm going to use the coordinating die to die cut it out which I am so excited to see Hero Arts coming out with more coordinating dies for sentiments. I'm also going to take some white cardstock and die cut out those images that I did that I had stamped out. So those are going to be layered behind my images. I had also gone ahead and die cut out more of my sentiment from some black cardstock to layer together with liquid glue. That's going to help build dimension. 
And then here are my stamped and colored images that I'm layering together with that additional piece. And this is just going, going to kind of give it some stability. I will pop them up with some foam squares, but I like to have another layer there just, just to stabilize it a little better so it isn't too flimsy. Now I have a card base that is going to be four and a quarter by five and a half side folding. I added some tape runner to the front so I could place my dried uh, stenciled panel over the top. I'm going to be taking white foam squares and adding them to that large floral arrangement. I also am going to add white foam squares behind that one with the caterpillar. Now these are thin white foam squares, so there's not a ton of dimension to it. And I also added one to the top part of the butterfly wing. Now I went ahead and added that floral arrangement down in the bottom corner. I removed the backing of the foam squares and I'm adding this uh, image with the caterpillar. And then for my butterfly, I removed the backing of that one foam square and liquid glue to the bottom part because the bottom part is going to be on that foil arrangement and the wing is going to be hanging off. So this way, it's nice and flush across. I did the same kind of process with my sentiment where I added black foam squares to one side and then I'm going to add liquid glue to the side that's going to over just slightly overlap that image with the caterpillar. And to add this, I always like to use my tweezers to kind of help align it and make sure it's straight and just keeps my fingers out of the way. Now I did want to come back and I'm going to add some white gel details to the butterfly wings. I kind of color them, cover, colored <laughs> over them with a dark gray marker. So I'm kind of making those spots pop out a little bit more with my white gel pen. Then that finishes off my card project for today. So I hope you enjoyed the process and learning how to use the different elements to create kind of those mixed media backgrounds without it overpowering if you wanna add images on top. I absolutely love how this came out, so I hope you do too. Thanks so much for stopping by today.